let's start with the built-in unity attributes these are very easy to use you don't have to write a single script and they can really change how your how the default inspector in the unity looks and it can increase the usability and the readability of your variables of any class so for example we have this player game object with a player class and this player class has obvious variables like player name little backstory health damage and two variables for his weapon so by default this is how this will look in the inspector here is the player name uh, this is a backstory and it will have uh, multiple lines of backstory like this he will have a health field float field and int field his id weapon name and suppose suppose for example like x and weapon damage 10 now we want to customize how this looks in the inspector so the first thing that we may want to do is that this little backstory is not a single line but uh, for example three lines of text and we want to look at it in one instance so the first attribute that we are going to look at is the multi line what it does it simply extends this string field into a multi line string input so you can see the whole uh, backstory at one go this was really easy now let's come to the range attribute the range attribute takes two arguments or you can say input so the first one is the minimum value that your variable can go and the next one is the maximum value that it can go this range attribute will give a slider for this variable for health so this was how it how it looked now this health variable will also have a slider which goes from the minimum value that you assigned in the range attribute 0 200 so now you can quickly change the values between any minimum or max value so for example you know that the player health is gonna lie between 70 to 100 when he spawns or anything so this is a nice way of quickly iterating over your designs the same way health was uh, the range was used to give a slider for a float value we can use the same range attribute for a int for an integer suppose for the damage so we know the player damage is going to be between 10 and 20 so just applying this range attribute with min 10 and max 20 we can get a nice damage slider with values between 10 and 20 and it, and it always uh, returns an int so you don't have to worry about that uh, using range for floats and int it will always uh, adjust for what value type that it, it is being used now the next attribute is hidden inspector so to understand when we want to use hidden inspector suppose we have a integer player id which is very critical for uh, many applications like you don't always want to send all these player data if you want to reference your player suppose it's a multiplayer game and you are sending all this information over network so you don't want always don't want to send all this player information every time you want to reference the player so a single integer uh, which is unique to a player this player class the instance of the player is really helpful in referencing your player so this is a very critical piece of id that you are all that you are always passing around that is supposed to be unique supposed to be constant so what you want is this id to be public so that other scripts can access it other functions can work on it but you also don't want this uh, id to be exposed here in the inspector so that you don't accidentally change it so that other people working on the project don't accidentally fiddle with it so here comes the hide in inspector attribute what it does it simply hides the public variable from the inspector so that you don't have to worry about changing it ever again there are other methods of doing the same thing but if you are going quick and dirty hide in inspector is really easy really helpful
now let's coming to the weapon name and weapon damage here what your intention is separating blocks of variable from each other so suppose uh, with time you will have like 20 or 30 variables with the player we now we just have a weapon name we are going to have some variables related to armor some variables related to like his skills etc so you want a little bit of separation between different groups of variables so now comes the space attribute uh, the argument what it takes is the number of now the number of pixels space that you want between this variable and the next variable so what that will do is simply put a 20 pixels height space between these two variables to achieve the same thing uh, another attribute is the header attribute header is little bit better than the space as you will see very soon let's suppose you want to group variables with a with a like a head like yes like a heading that all these variables belong to the player and these two belong to weapon so what this header attribute will do is everything below the header and below any other header attribute is it will group all of them into this nice little under a player bold a bold text of player header and the weapon will be below this weapon header so this is again a helpful attribute to group together uh, variables belonging to a particular like a particular functionality or anything to classify or group together different sets of variable in your inspector the last attribute that i'm going to talk about is the tooltip attribute so for example if you have a variable n in your script you know what this n stands for you have written the code but a designer uh, who is just going to see this n and no extra information about is will have no clue about what the n means so to give extra information about any variable in directly in the inspector we use the tooltip attribute so any extra info you are going to directly write here so you may write n means something And that extra piece of information, when the designer will hover his mouse on the variable, he can see the tooltip here and means something.